I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're plunging into the icy depths with Ishvel Point, The Tales of Scuba Steve by Stephen Kamlin. Join Ben, Oliver, Danielle, Ava, and Al as they embark on a day of camp like no other, guided by the enigmatic Scuba Steve into a realm of mystery and excitement this adventure not only promises a thrilling journey, but also sheds light on global environmental issues, making it a must read for young explorers everywhere. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Steve, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me. I got a nickname. You're, I got an idea that your nickname is Scuba Steve as well, right? It is. Okay, cool. That's how I go. Yep. Sounds good. And this is kind of autobiography, uh, an autobiography, this story? Yeah, it started out as shenanigans. Uh, my wife is a reading teacher. And there were very limited books for adventure of this kind. And with one of my um, hobbies being scuba diving, she hears about the stories when we all go out to dinner and various things, social events. So she asked me, she goes, you should write a book. Hmm. And I said, ah, what do I need to write a book for? I can't really write. I rarely read. And it <laughs> turned me into uh, somebody who I was trying to avoid doing the laundry with her. So I said, I'm in the middle of writing. <laughs> she came over. She looked at the computer. I had stuck a pencil behind my ear to make it like <laughs> I was writing, even though I was using a computer. Right. And um, I only had a, I had a title page. And um, you know how it ends. I did the laundry. But then <laughs> later that night, I ended up writing a book. So Excellent. Very, very cool. Who is your intended audience for this book? elementary school students. So we're looking at anyone from second grade, uh, seven, eight years old, all the way up to early middle school, maybe sixth, seventh grade. Very cool. Let's give the folks at home an idea of what the story is about. Okay. The story, as it goes, it's a series. So there's multiple books in the series and the children go to day camp mm -hmm. and they arrive at camp by bus. They go into camp, they meet and reunite with their friends after the 10 months of long school year, and they're all waiting for summer camp. And when they get there, they eventually are hopeful that they get to be in my group, yours truly, Scuba Steve, yeah. because I teach swimming at the camp. And while we're at the camp and they're learning how to swim, we go on magical adventures. We go down to the bottom of the pool. We all put our hands on the bottom, almost like a Ouija board, and we put our hands on the, the drain. And just like that, magic, poof, the kids transport, everything stops, the, re the regular world, and we go on adventure to various locations around the world so we can tackle different environmental issues that uh, the oceans face. Very cool. It's a great premise. It's a great introduction for kids to learn about scuba diving and what it's about. And the magical element, of course, is uh, great for kids as well because it catches their attention and their imagination. Now, this is a series of books? Yes, there's a series. So far, there are three in the series. The fourth one's currently being written. Um, they are based, it's fact-based fiction. So the stories are based on a real place they are based with real problems and they are they go about it in a little bit of a fictitious manner by magically going down the drain of the pool you know we know that that really can't happen so they learn about what's really going on in the environment so in this particular book ishvel point um, as you mentioned it's icy cold they are going up to the north pole to the arctic area of the world and even as far remote as that, they're noticing that there's a pervasive plastic problem, plastic mm. bottles, plastic bags, the straws, various waste and trash and garbage. And they're noticing that it's harming the animals and the wildlife. So Scuba Steve helps them. We figure out a manner in which to help clean up the environment. And we learn about the environment while we're doing that. 
Great. You accomplish a lot of goals with your books. Uh, you know, you're educating, you're informing, you're teaching them about scuba, you're teaching them about the environment. So I think it's uh, a real win, 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 of course. Do you really teach camp in the summer? Do you teach scuba? I do. Uh, cool. Well, I teach swimming at a local day camp and I am a paddy dive master. Um, I'm not an instructor. I'm good enough to be an assistant in the classes. So there are certain tasks that they have me do uh, while I'm assisting teaching the classes. So that's got to be a lot of fun. I mean, kids hate going to school, but they love going to camp. They do, so. but they don't, while they like going to camp and they like free swim in the afternoon while it's like 90 degrees, mm -hmm. they do not most of the time enjoy going in at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning when it's chilly. Yeah. And they have to learn so it's almost like school. So that's where all of this started. I found ways and manners to get these children into the water. I found a way to convince them to get in the water. So all of these things that take place in the book, I kind of do in real life. Very cool. Very cool. I mean, people, I know scuba divers in my life, and I don't know a scuba diver who's not addicted to it. They love it. Every opportunity they have, they're on their boat, they're going out, they're going scuba diving, you know, early in the spring to late in the fall, right? I mean, it has that kind of effect on people. It's kind of a, you know, going into a different realm when you go into the water like that. It is. It um, It's a sense of freedom. You know, let's forget about the sharks and the, the fish and the turtles and the dolphins. We'll forget about that for a moment. But the pure joy and relaxation of just floating, feeling weightless. If you've ever wanted to know what it's like to fly, and I'm not talking hang gliding or skydiving, where you're rushing through at 9 million miles an hour, uh, floating through the water uh, when everything's calm, it's yeah. such a serene feeling. It's wonderful. It sounds great. Sounds great. I've never tried it. Um, I have to one day, that's for sure. I'll have to this, get you out there with us. Okay, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. The setting of Ishvel Point is very intriguing. We spoke before we started recording and you said it's a fictional place, but it's kind of like an amalgamation of different places, right? Yes. Um, it, like I mentioned briefly, it, Ishvel Point is set in a on an iceberg, mm -hmm. on an ice shelf up in the Arctic region of the world. So when we arrive and the children notice a uh, glacial calving where the glaciers fall off and that's when an iceberg goes into the water. And when that happens, you can imagine the size of them, that creates a lot of waves. Mm. So those waves then threw a lot of plastic and trash into the cabin where the children were. You know, after they went down the drain, they showed up in a cabin. They ended right. up in the cabin and it filled up with water and plastic. Gotcha. So they now had to figure out a way to clean it up. They ended up meeting a narwhal, seals, um, polar bears. They saw the northern lights. Um, they get And then at the back of the book, after the story, we actually have real photos. There are real fact pages in the book to teach them what they learned about during the fictional story. Awesome. awesome. So I kind of wrap it up with real life. Wonderful. Wonderful. You mentioned your wife's a reading teacher. Has she tested this out on any of the kids? She has. Um, whether she's lying or not, they <laughs> love it. <laughs> okay, awesome. I'm sure they do. It really That's is what a comes very to imaginative story. Right. Um, and uh, let me ask you this. Have you envisioned this as a series? It's been a long time since there's been a diving show. Um, you know, I can't even remember the last time there was a diving show and a long time since there's been an environmentally themed show. I remember Captain Planet, but that was decades ago. Yeah. So I think this fits both categories and be an awesome series. What do you think? I agree with you. When do we start recording? I, I will have to, you'll have to teach me how to scuba and then I can absolutely. play scuba Steve. How does that sound? I, I <laughs> remember a show a long time ago, the Mutual of Omaha, the yeah. Wild wild kingdom and i have a view that i would love this series to turn into something like that where there's an animated series for like fifth, for half of the show and there's a live introduction and a live wrap-up at the end 
to talk about what they've seen and what they learned about. Awesome. Uh, that's what I would like to see happen. So yeah, you know I like that combination of the animation, it gets the kids in, then cut to the live action, or even two shows, one geared for younger people that is uh, animation. And then like, like you said, a mutual of Omaha Wild Kingdom type of show, but diving, you know, be Scuba Steve. I mean, they don't have that on Discovery that I've seen. So uh, I think you're the perfect guy for it. And a lot of the casting for reality TV doesn't come from actors. They come from guys that really do it. And you've got a big personality. I think you'd be perfect for it. So get you to hire yourself a crew for a day, come up with some ideas for interviews and, and you know, put together a little pilot and pitch it to uh, discovery. I think that'd be awesome. I agree. Thank yeah. you. Okay, good. We're in, we're in uh we're in alignment there on that. The name of the book is Israel Point, The Tales of Scuba Steve. It's written by Steve Camlet. It's a wonderful story that'll get your children intrigued and interested in understanding scuba diving, self-contained underwater breathing apparatus diving, apparatus diving. And uh, it'll also teach them about the environmental problems that are plaguing the oceans. All important goals for sure. Scuba Steve, thanks so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. To the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.